Samsung Galaxy S5 three years later. That video's coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the Samsung Galaxy S5 three years later. Now the S5 was released on April 2014 and this device is now over three years old and you know what it's been one of those devices that I think has been pretty great over the long term in terms of what it offered. You know a long term device here with its AMOLED display, waterproofing, IR blast, so this thing had a lot of great features. You know, the only thing that Samsung really went wrong with here was the software. They kind of didn't update this as much as we would have liked, though. But I'm going to share with you a lot of the categories here of how this thing does perform here in 2017. Well, the first section I want to talk about with you guys is the build and durability. So, of course, this was the days of the plastic construction. This was actually the last Galaxy device that got away with the plastic build from Samsung until they switched it over to the metal and aluminum builds, which is when well, I think more people started to pay attention to Samsung with the S6. But this this was like kind of like where Apple is now, where Samsung was at a point where they needed to change up design, and they went ahead and released this phone anyway and kind of pissed a lot of people off. But overall, you know, it hasn't held up incredibly well. The phone around the edges is quite nicked up and the glass here on the S5 is scratched up. So, you know, it has been through quite a lot. You can even see my battery door is gone. And this is one of the biggest annoyances of the S5 was that battery door. That thing just flapped on away all the time and trying to get that, you know, cord inside of there while you're, you know, half awake and stuff was an issue. So this thing right here was an issue in my personal opinion. Opinion. but overall the build quality wasn't nothing impressive but still didn't feel like a cheap cheap phone it still felt like a flagship phone just I would say a flagship plastic phone Samsung Galaxy S5 was also able to go ahead and take the back off and you could just go ahead and remove the battery. You could insert an SD card slot. You could change these backs out. You can go on eBay or whatever and get different colors, whatever you want. Blue, they had like a blue one. They had like a dark charcoal gray gold. Some people said the gold edition of this back looked like a Band-Aid on the phone. I kind of agree with that here. But this was a 2800 milliamp hour battery cell in the Samsung S5 and and the S5's battery life was decent at first, but it became kind of pretty crappy over the long term. But still not a horrible battery life. 2800 milliamp hours, it still did better than phones that it was competing with at the time, such as the iPhone 5S, for example, or the iPhone 6. It still had better battery life than those phones. But without this guy on here, my waterproofing did go away. But when it was on there, it definitely had some solid waterproofing abilities. And you could definitely dunk this thing underwater. It was really a neat feature for its time. So the key specifications here with the Galaxy S5 three years later is a 5.1 inch 1920 by 1080p AMOLED display. So super AMOLED HD. And even here in 2017, this thing looks quite stunning. Actually still looks better to me than like an iPhone 7 display, for example. Now the rear camera is a 16 megapixel ISO cell sensor, 2160p recording. So this thing could do up to 4K video recording. It was a little bit jello-y. It wasn't the most stable video of all time, but Samsung did go ahead and include a video stabilization feature built right into their camera. So if you go ahead and go in the settings, you can see right here, video stabilization here for the S5. Two gigabytes of RAM here and a Snapdragon 801. So those are really the key specifications that matter. This thing weighed 140 five grams or 8.1 millimeter stick so it wasn't a super slim phone it had a little bit of thickness definitely not a super thick phone either though it was comfortable size it had decent curves and it curved in the hand okay i think it did have a little bit of a squarish curve look it's not the most curvy phone so i wouldn't call this phone exactly sexy but definitely was a decent functional phone here overall 
But taking a quick second to talk a little bit more about the display of the S5, that AMOLED display has held up well. You know, 1080p is still what's on Samsung's or Apple's flagship phones these days with the, you know, over 400 pixels per inch here. This had well over 400 pixels per inch on this 5.1 inch display here, almost a 5.2 inch. Going over into settings, let's go into settings really quickly on this device. You can reveal yourself the ability to tweak the display as well. So if we go into the display settings, here on the S5, you had the ability to go ahead and change it to all these different modes, making this a quite a you know functional and customizable display. So you had dynamic mode, standard, professional photo, as well as cinema. So definitely could get any kind of like display mode you wanted here for the S5. I always kept it on adapt display. It's kind of like true tone for the iPad. So kind of dig that one right there. But I just wanted to touch a little bit more on display. If you are in the budget arena, you're looking for a used smartphone and the S5 is on your list. And this is why you're watching this video. This guy right here is gonna give you a solid display here in 2017. Definitely nothing to laugh at here in 2017. Now, one disappointing area three years later on the S5 is the software. It seems that Samsung might have abandoned the software on a lot of these devices because I'm still rocking Android 6.0 Marshmallow. No nougat here on board and no chances of it probably coming. Now, the S5, I know the hackers and the people who like to tweak the phone know that you can go ahead and hack this thing, root it, put some custom ROMs on it, make it look just like an S7, S8. Yes, we can go that right. But for the mainstream people that just want to have a phone, they don't want to deal with all that stuff, you know, you're pretty much stuck on the older software. So if you do decide to go with one of these older Samsung Galaxy flagships here in 2017, you are going to have the issue of being on an older software. But whether that's an issue or not comes down to how much you really care about that. Now, you do get security enhancements with newer softwares and the ability Ability to run more later more modern apps so it could be an issue if you're into stuff like that but for just general use marshmallow still performs just fine here you got the doze enhancements here in marshmallow so definitely pretty good on battery life as well now, Samsung's TouchWiz layer over this software though is starting to look quite old here. If you go into settings, you can see this settings menu is kind of convoluted. It's very, I would say, hard to find things in here. And this thing always kind of annoyed me when it comes to looking for things. I always had to go to view this as a list to make sure I could find stuff easily. And even then it was a little bit hard. This was a really long list of features. I mean, you could scroll all day going through the features here on the S5. But a lot of people did love the feature set that came with the S5. So it's pretty good. Now, overall, like I say, the software itself is looking kind of old. You know, the phone dialer looking a little bit dated. If we go into the keyboard, for example, let me go into messages, create a message, and just write something in here. It did have the Swift Flow keyboard, but you can see this keyboard right here just looking a little bit old these days. Now, going into the camera, this is also an area that needs a little bit of a touch up, if you ask me, but they did in the future Samsung devices. The settings menu a little bit all over the place, not really clean, not really slick and easy to use. You have to look and read through all of this. It's not very well laid out here so definitely software the touch whiz to me not the greatest here on the s5 but it does run pretty smooth and performance doesn't take too much of a hit even though this is three years later and it hasn't been updated in software too much it's still a pretty snappy device overall i mean it multitasks quite well you can see right there it does have to reopen things from time to time but it does multitask quite well and it does it's pretty smooth as you can see right there from time to time it will lag up if you're overworking the device such as you know transferring files playing games browsing all those things at once will choke this device up a little bit but overall still pretty buttery and snappy if you're just doing general tasks here in 2017 on the s5 now the camera on the Galaxy S5, it's yeah, to a one-sided affair if you ask me. What I mean is the rear. The rear camera on the S5 is a pretty solid camera. So I'm gonna bring in the iPhone SE over there. I'm gonna grab the camera and you can see it focuses quite fast, takes a picture quite fast and shoots a solid picture. You can get really good pictures here with the S5 and it does have plenty of features to make those pictures even better. But where we have an issue with the S5 is the front facing camera. So front facing people, out there who use their front facing cameras a lot this thing is not the best now it does look pretty good here through the camera because i am shooting lights right next to this ooh, 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 as you can see right here so it's going to look decent here on camera but this front facing camera plenty of noise reproduced from these pictures and you're definitely going to want to use the rear camera if you do use the s5 but overall here in 
2017, the pictures that produce from the rear camera are acceptable. Noise levels are a little bit higher than more current flagships, but still pretty acceptable for being three years old on the rear camera for the S5. Oh, battery life here three years later has actually held up quite well and the reason is is I could go ahead and swap the battery whenever in addition to that it hasn't been like a horrible battery life I get through the day pretty easily with this thing and you know it does take a while to charge this thing but it does have all these ultra power saving modes power saving modes and a lot of things you could do to tweak this to get better battery life but you can also put extended battery packs on here so you can't really complain about battery life on the S5 and three years later this is not going to be an issue if you're one of those people deciding to pick up an S5 as a backup or just, you know, a cheaper flagship from Samsung on the used market. You can get this thing on Amazon now for about 175 ish or you can find it on eBay used for about 140 So it's pretty, you know, pretty accessible here in 2017. And the battery life is not going to disappoint you. So some people might be asking about the gaming on the S5. You know, I just want that device to play some games on it, a mobile gaming device here, some of the younger crowd. Let's go ahead and pull the media toggles down. And you can see it's loading dead trigger like no problem. So definitely is a pretty decent gamer as well. You are going to get not the latest GPU, but you're going to get the Adreno 330 GPU. And again, you're rocking out with a 2.5 gigahertz Crate 400 CPU. So that's a Snapdragon 801. So combine those two together and you have yourself more, more than a sufficient enough processor GPU combination to run solid performance on your games. Now, they're not going to be no S8, S7 Edge style performance, but it's still going to be suitable for most of the lighter games on the Android store. I would even go as far to say this is going to run Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, no issue here, even three years later. So gaming solid here for the Galaxy S5. So taking this vintage classic look at the Samsung Galaxy S5, how has the value been? Has this been a valuable phone? Has it held up over the three years? And I would say as a functional smartphone, it has. You know, as a, you know, investment, not really the price of an uh, iPhone 6, for example, or let's say a 6S around the same period these smartphones were released. Well, the 6 specifically with this one, you can get more money out of an iPhone 6 here, which was around the same release date as the S5. So, you know, Samsung has really stepped it up when it comes to their product offerings these days with the more premium constructions, but their brand image is still not, you know, at the level of Apple's when it comes to reselling your device. So over the three years, the software has felt quite old in comparison to some of the Apple devices. And I really didn't want to bring Apple in this, but you know what? You got to mention it when it's its main competitor on the market. In addition to that, the smartphone itself like I say, has been overall pretty functional, but I don't think, you know, Samsung Galaxy S5 was the best investment when it goes for, you know, a five-year phone. It was a decent investment if you already got rid of it, you had it for two years, but, you know, Samsung really needed to go ahead and keep this thing updated, maybe run it on Nougat, and not just update it to those official versions, change the icons. I mean, change the software look and feel to like the newer phones. That's what people really want to see. But overall, I'm going to give it out a skip scale of 1 to 10 in terms of the value department, the investment, you know, was it a good investment? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'll give this Galaxy S5 a solid 6 out of 10. I had to take off 4 points for the reasons I already mentioned earlier. So well, that's it guys, a vintage classic retro look at the Samsung Galaxy S5. It seemed to have all the features in the kitchen sink, a heart rate monitor, 16 megapixel camera, water resistance, USB 3.0 here. It also did have removable battery and a sealed up removable battery as well. So you could duct this thing underwater as mentioned below. Expandable storage, IR blaster, which you don't even see on some of the newer phones, 1080p AMOLED display. It seemed like the total package, but overall three years later, it has kind of lost a lot of its value, but still one of the best phones Samsung has ever produced in terms of the overall feature set. Do you guys agree? Go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on the S5 three years later. You think this thing was a flop? You think it's over with? You think Samsung you know really messed up with this one do you still have one are you thinking about getting one let's chat about that and go ahead and share this with one person you think could find this video helpful maybe you know someone who's like man should i go get an old s5 i still see these things all over the place and anyway nick here helping you to master your technology thumbs up if you enjoyed it i will catch you all in the next one and peace